You mentioned you know people who've gone through this uh, treatment where they've actually reversed their rage by two years. Um, now, I know there are these kind of three levels you talk about of treatment. Is that level three? Is that the kind of deep level that uh, you talk about? Because I'd, I'd sort of like to sequentially go through, and I, I presume that eating less is that sort of level one, is it? So, uh, or level one and level two, perhaps you could explain what those three levels are, and then we could yeah. go through what we can do at the moment at each of those levels. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the first level is prevention. So skipping meals, eating healthy, which I would say is roughly a, a Mediterranean diet. And, uh, and, Keeping, exercise, keeping your body in good shape. So exercise, run for 10 minutes every few days at a minimum, uh, lose your breath, at least go for a walk and build up muscle strength in your main muscles. That'll help hormones as well as the ability to survive a fall, which uh, in the US happens every 19 seconds and is worse than cancer uh, for, for uh, longevity. So those, that's the top level. That's easy uh, in my view. Um, and obvious, even though most people don't do it. So you've mentioned eating less. You mentioned the Mediterranean diets, which I think we should just expand upon a little bit there to find out what you mean when you say that. And then I want to come to exercise. Can we just start with the Mediterranean diet? Um, what do you mean when you say that? And what is that based upon? Yeah, well, your food should look more like a, a, a rabbit's dinner than a, than a, a lion's meal, put it that way. Um, Vegetarianism is great. I can't do that. I like meat. But when I eat meat, it's small portions and it's usually fish uh, or shellfish, uh, sometimes chicken and re very rarely red meat and not a lot of it. Um, there are carnivores who are pr promoting a, a carnivorous diet, mostly meat, keto. Now, I, I'm a scientist. I just go by the data. I don't care. In fact, I'd love it if meat was healthy, but it's according to the science, it's not. There's no evidence that people who eat a lot of meat around the world are the ones that live a long time. It's the smaller, thinner, typically women who eat plant-based diets, perhaps with a bit of red wine, olive oil, that live the longest. That's undeniable. I mean, just go into a nursing home and have a look. It's not a secret. Um, so that to me says that we want to eat less, eat fresh, eat vegetables, less meat, um, is that because of mTOR? Is that, or is that one of the reasons where you want us to keep mTOR down to promote that sort of survival signal and meat, I guess, and other high protein foods are going to keep it up? Is that the rationale there? Yeah, that, that's one of the main reasons, exactly. And, uh, but also that when you have less sugar in your body, uh, AMPK and sirtuins will be activated as well. So I am very careful, not very, but I try not to eat excess sugar and uh, and just unprocessed carbs, which are everywhere, including in sauces and dressings. Um, so you have to be careful. I, I've even gone to the point as a scientist to wear a continuous glucose monitor to see what food does to me. And we don't want those spikes in sugar because they will uh, be bad and shut down our defenses. What, um, about, so anyway, what, what about olive oil? I've, I've read in your way that olive oil, I think, activates sirtuins, right? Yes, it does. And so the first- and That's a good thing. That's, that's what we want. Yes, correct. Now, there, there are two ways. Well, let's say three ways to activate sirtuins. One is the usual exercise and hunger will turn on those genes. Uh, but if you want to take a supplement, uh, you can do it by taking resveratrol, which is a plant molecule that comes mostly from red wine but uh, you need it as a supplement. You don't want to be drinking 300 glasses of red wine a day. I don't recommend that. But the, the other thing is olive oil was discovered to also activate sirtuin enzymes um, by uh, Doug Marcinek, uh, who is a collaborator of mine. And it's really interesting, right, that, that the components of red wine and olive oil are activating this longevity enzyme directly, just binding to it and making it work better. I find that really, really satisfying as a scientist. So I'm eating, yeah, I guess you'd say eating, not drinking, uh, more olive oil. Uh, in the morning, I used to have yogurt. Now I often have a little bit, a few teaspoons of olive oil. The reason that I have olive oil uh, and or yogurt is that resveratrol and some other plant polyphenols that we can talk about are highly insoluble. Once you pull them out of the plant and process them, they're the equivalent of trying to eat brick dust. 
Uh, and that's a mistake a lot of people make. They think they can just have a glass of water and take resveratrol. It won't get absorbed. So I mix those together, dissolve them, and, and then have that. And I know from clinical trials that I did in the 2000s that that works. Um, other polyphenols, quercetin, um, there's um, is eaten. We discovered all of these extended lifespan back in the 2000s. Uh, we first showed it in yeast and then worms. Uh, it's been forgotten by, by most people, but that's where it first came from. Now, why would these plant molecules make us healthier? Well, I have a theory called xenohormesis, which is xeno means from other species and hormesis we've discussed. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I think when we eat plants that are making these molecules, particularly when they're stressed out, they don't get enough water or too much sunlight or bugs are eating them, they make these defense molecules to survive. But we ingest them and then we get that signal that our food supply might run out. And in that way, we get the benefits as well. Yeah. And so the combination of uh, not eating as much, exercising, and taking plant molecules that stimulate adversity, I think that's the winning bet. That, that's stage one and stage two. That these sort of stressed out plants, you know, it's, it's, it's really, I love that. I love that theory that that will be a signal to us that food may be going away or there may be a problem and we need to also activate this uh, survival signal as well. Um, this presumably is why, I guess, organic food potentially, which doesn't have pesticides, uh, are also going to have to work harder to get that xenohormetic stress signal more from organic foods, do you think, than non-organic yeah, foods? We are. We are. And and so if, if you can afford it, it's better to eat food that's been grown outside the uh, the typical uh, greenhouse. So that if you look at a lettuce that's grown, I'll single out California, but you, you know, a lettuce that you buy that's watery and not very green, that's the worst. That's a plant that has been grown in the equivalent of a, uh, a movie theater with popcorn. You don't want to eat those. You want to go for the ones that are, have been picked on and full of color, color molecules, come on at the same time as these polyphenols. Um, and yeah, and, and have them picked when they're, when they're uh, thirsty or had a lot of sunlight. And yeah, organic is the easiest way to do that. Another way is to eat locally or even grow your own. You mentioned before that you're a scientist, you like to look at the data, you don't see any long living communities around the world having high levels of meat consumption. Of course, keto uh, is a very popular diet, and not only is it popular, there's no doubt that many people feel incredible benefits in the short term, possibly even the medium term, from eating that way. Whether it's reversal of you know reversal or remission of type two diabetes, better energy, better focus, um, all kinds of benefits that that are clearly feel good to that individual, so they want to continue eating that way. Do you feel that there is a trade-off sometimes between short-term health and how we feel and long-term longevity? Um, because it, it does seem that you're saying people to eat less. I know you say you've got used to it, you have more energy, but some people may say, well, do I need to sacrifice my short-term life and vitality to have that long-term, longer lifespan? Well, no. People who, who eat the way I do uh, are known to have just as much, if not more, energy than people who are eating uh, ketogenic diets. Now, the, the ketogenic diets on their own aren't, aren't horrible. The ketosis can be a great state to be in. But here's the problem. We know that there's a trade-off. Your body either wants to grow and repair or hunker down and survive it switches depending on how much and what you're eating. We know this because if you change something that is alterable in response to the environment, such as growth hormone, uh, growth hormone gives the body the signal to, on this side, grow and repair. Um, and then when you don't have a lot of growth hormone, you don't grow and you, know, you hunger down and you actually survive longer. This has been done ad nauseum in worms, in mice, and even in human populations that have mutations 
in the growth hormone receptor are a little bit shorter, but apparently highly protected against diseases of aging. So this is a paradigm in our field, okay? Growth and reproduction versus hunkering down and living long. Now, if you're eating a lot of meat, taking testosterone, shooting yourself up with growth hormone, you will feel great, right? Your, your body is in the, the, the growth mode, but that's at the expense of long-term survival. Think of it as burning the candle at both ends. Instead, what I prefer is to be in the energetic mode, but also have my body protect itself daily from the ravages of, of aging. Um, and so I feel just as great as I would if I was eating a lot of meat, uh, because now I'm used to it. But my body is defending itself in a way that eating a lot of meat and taking those hormones would actually suppress. Yeah, so fascinating. If you enjoyed watching that clip, here's another powerful clip that I think you will also really enjoy. The whole idea of reducing sugar by just adding unlimited amounts of these chemicals has to be thought through and we should be weaning people off ultra-sweetened products, which make them more likely, particularly kids, to, to seek sugar.